going to learn tonight is a glamour appointment. And in Mary Kay, we offer at least two complimentary appointments. And the first one we call Skincare 101 because it's really important that we feature our skincare products first and also that we don't overwhelm the guests and ourselves. Right, new consultants? Uh, we don't want to feel like we have to show everything at the first appointment. We want to leave a little something special for the second appointment. The second appointment we call <laughs> Color 101. And consultants, this typically happens either with the hostess before all of her guests come, so it's good to come about 30 minutes early. Well, actually, a little bit more, uh, a little bit earlier than that. And you can do the hostess one on one with her color. And then all of her guests that are coming for their first appointment will do skincare and she can assist you. Or if it's just a one on one follow up appointment, then if she's purchased the skincare, she can just already have her skin cleansed and her foundation ready. And you can start just with color right then and there. So it really just depends on if she's by herself or with some friends. And so the guests here tonight are starting with, they have their um, skin cleansed, their eye makeup off, they have foundation primer, which sometimes is fun to just do on half of the face. I love to do half the face with skincare and foundation primer. They really won't look lopsided, but they might feel a little lopsided. And they have their foundation on. And just so the guests know, we have lots of different foundation choices. We have liquid, we have um, even a little bit more coverage liquid, we have tinted moisturizers, cream, cream to powder, mineral powder foundation, we have lots of choices. So what you're trying tonight, if you want to try a second version or something different with your consultant, um, you can at your next appointment. I will also say for the consultants and the guests in the room that one of the things I learned a long time ago from a makeup artist that I still do today, and we won't do, worry about doing it tonight for ease, but I always do my skincare routine, and then I do my eye makeup. Then I wipe off any excess eye makeup or shadow or anything that has may have um, you know fallen below my eye, and then I do my foundation and continue on. So that might feel a little funny the first time you do it to not have any foundation on and be and and you're doing your eye makeup, but you'll notice that you will you will always have a very pristine, lovely canvas right under the eye, and you won't have those little shimmer flakes that fall down sometimes that you don't often see until you get in the mirror in the car. And then there they are. So that's a great tip that I learned to give that yourself that beautiful, flawless finish to do your eye makeup first. I've also found that it's very typical at a glamour appointment that the one area that the guests want to spend the most time on is the eyes, right? <clears throat> and the other parts are fun too, and we'll spend a little bit of time on cheeks and lips, but I find that the thing that everybody wants to know is how to do their eye makeup. Now here's the deal. There's lots of ways to do your eye makeup. Um, it's like art. It's like painting and drawing, and everybody has a different style. So tonight, I'm going to teach you one technique that is fail-proof. <laughs> no matter what colors you're using, or what you want to do, or what kind of eye shape you have, this makeup technique tonight is going to work for everybody. If you love eye makeup and you do yours differently, no problem. You're not doing it wrong. There's so many ways to do it. So consultants just know that too. But I'm glad our consultants are watching because it is important that you have one technique that you're able to do at any glamour appointment that you're consistent with and that works for every eye shape as you're learning the different eye shapes. So we're going to start with your color card and you can go ahead and pull that out and I'm going to probably be borrowing some up here just to use as a demo. But I'm going to take this color card. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, if someone has an extra one out there, oh perfect. Okay, great. I'm going to use this color card here. And isn't it easy that anybody can be a makeup artist in Mary Kay? Because if you haven't looked at these color cards recently, you'll notice that they are numbered one, two, and three, it's like paint by number. So there's, uh, there are uh, other choices on here of how to do your eye makeup, isn't that great? So you put shade one here and you put shade two here and, um, and this really got me through when I was a new consultant and didn't know what I was doing um, and I felt very confident. So I just want you to know, if you don't feel confident as a makeup artist yet, that this is a great tool for everyone to use. Well, we're gonna use these three shades at the top and you can go ahead and peel the plastic off and what I prefer to do is we're gonna start with the, the middle color and the darkest color to begin with. So we're gonna start with the one that's number two and three to start. So peel that plastic off. And if you're using a sponge tip applicator that looks like this, you're gonna use one side um, to begin with, with your shade number two. And I'm gonna tell you which each color is called. 
and um, their purpose. So you use one flat side for shade number two. And those of you that are using a brush set, I'm gonna show you which brush to use. It is gonna be the longer, rounder brush that you're gonna use for shade number two. Now shade number two is called your contour color. And this is the shade that's gonna give your eye um, dimension. So it's not gonna be flat. It's also going to give your eye more eye shape if you need to, and it's also going to act as a great shadowing color because here's one eye technique for all of you to know. It's just like painting. Do I have any artists in the room? Any artists? Okay, well I'm married to one, and so uh, we were talking about this, and did you know that light colors bring things out and dark colors recede? So when you wanna look skinny, you wear Black, right? Nobody can see you, where am I? Um, so light colors bring things out, dark colors recede. We wanna create a really great shape on your eye, so we're gonna use a darker color. This also typically does not have a shimmer to it because this is designed to just create a shadow. This is the middle color called your contour color. Everybody got it? Okay, so you're gonna take your brush or the side of your applicator, you're gonna get use about half for each eye of shade number two. Whenever you're working with your eye, you always want to go from the outside in. So you all say that after me. Outside in. Outside in. Very good. We're going to say it again just so you remember. Outside in. Good. Couple reasons. One is you don't want to tug and pull at your eye. And trust me, the more years that you do this, the more your skin just thinks it's supposed to go like that. So don't do that. Also, it's going to save you from that excess shadow on the outside <laughs> of your eye. So you're going to start where your lashes begin or end, however you want to look at it. You can take your mirror out of your tray if you want to get a better view. The pink trays also have magnifying on the other side if you need that as well. And you're gonna take your shade number two on your brush. I forgot to tell you one other little tip, which I will in a second. You're gonna start at the outside of your eye, the outside corner where your lashes begin. You're gonna rotate this color around your eyeball, basically. So if you're using a brush, you'll see how easy that is to do. And we're gonna create this shadow right here in the crease of your eye. But here's the deal. Most people do it a little bit too low. Maybe you go right in your natural crease. So when your eyes are open, you don't see it. And that's not doing its job. Its job is to create that shadow to give you more lid. So you're gonna start at the outside, you're gonna rotate around the eye, but I want you to go a little bit higher than normal. In fact, when you open your eyes and look in the mirror, it should peek out up here. So this is not gonna go on the lid, it's gonna peek above the crease, and you're just gonna go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Now one thing I wanna show you, I'm gonna borrow this one more time, um, when you're using your makeup brushes, we were always taught to get some of the color on, and then you tap off the excess, right? Well, guess where we do that? We do that in our sink, and then it just keeps going down the drain and going down the drain and going down the drain. It also flakes up here. So I also learned from a great makeup artist to get the color on there, and then you're gonna load your brush. So you're gonna tap it in your brush. That way you don't get excess down here, and it saves you, your eyeshadows will last longer. So you're welcome. Sorry, consultants. <laughs> They're like, darn, less reorders. But it's great for our customers, so you're gonna get your product on there, the mineral eye color, then load your brush. Isn't that cool? And then you're gonna start out here and rotate it around your eye. So on your mark, get set, go. So they're taking shade number two, the contour color, and um, yeah, shade number two. And I, you know, a lot of my customers have one or two different contour shades. You know, maybe like a hazelnut is a great shade that kind of goes right there. Granite is a good color. It does have a little shimmer to it, but it can go both ways. It's kind of gray, kind of brown. So granite is perfect for in the crease. <clears throat> but basically, they're just gonna go around the eyeball really easy, especially with a brush. And consultants, I do take Glamour brush sets um, for demo out of my inventory. And as long as you just clean them between each use, now they're able to use the real brushes. And there is such a difference. Anybody go from using a cheap synthetic brush to our Mary Kay brush set is like night and day, isn't it? Yes, how great it goes on. Good, so they're starting in the outside, going around the eye with that shade number two, giving that nice pretty shadow in there. And don't worry if it's not perfect, the key in just a minute is gonna be blend, 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 blend. Okay, anybody out there have any questions so far? Shade number two, contour, good, easy, okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and tell you what to do with shade number three now to start. And if you're not there yet, that's just fine. Um, shade number three is called your accent color. So everybody say accent. Accent. That's right. It's fun in different parts of the country where I go and the different ways they say it. <laughs> accent down here in the south. This is the fun color. This is the color that you can have a drawer full, a compact full, because whatever mood you're in, this is the color to change. All right, purples and greens and blues and smoky uh, grays, all these accent colors is what you'll change. You can keep the other two shades pretty much the same, but have fun with this. So the accent color, there's two ways that you can apply it. You can either apply it with that same brush if you want to, um, uh, that same applicator, same side of the applicator. Or one other technique that I love is you can actually use your finger. So you can use the middle finger and you just get a little bit on the pad of the finger. The neat thing is the warmth and the oil of the finger really allows you to blend really well and it's pretty cool. It's like God made everybody's finger to fit their eyeball. I don't know why he did that, but he did. So that is so fun. Depending on your, how you feel comfortable, you can either use that same brush, you're gonna load it, or you can use a little bit of your finger. Here's where your accent color is gonna go. You're gonna place your finger or your brush in the outer corner of your eye, and then what I teach is you're gonna smudge it in about a third and smudge it up into the contour. So basically you're creating a little bit of a V, a side, sideways V on the outer corner of your eye. So where your lashes start, you're gonna smudge in and smudge up. And again, it's okay if it's not perfect, because we're gonna blend. So you can take your finger, reload your brush, smudge on the outside, about a third of the way in, and smudge up. So you're creating this little V in the outer corner, okay? And so consultants, if you literally have not taken one each of every accent color, you are missing out, girls, because you can get really routine. And somebody was saying to me earlier today, how do you meet people when you're out and about? Have some fun accent colors on your eyes and they'll meet you. <laughs> they'll say, what colors do you have on? And that'll really get you out of a rut. Okay, so they're taking their accent color shade number two, or shade number three, and they're smudging a little bit in the outer corner, a little bit up to create that V in the outer corner like that. Okay, anybody have any questions about that so far? All right, and you know, there's, there's other glamour techniques and kind of fun uh, clinics that we can do with smoky eyes and false eyelashes, it looks really good, um, that we can continue to do. One other thing too I will say is that if, as you're looking in your mirror, sometimes people say, hmm, do I have enough on? That means no, put more on. And if you say, do I have too much on? That means it's probably perfect, because you've been looking <laughs> like this. So, and we're gonna blend in a minute. Yes, a question. Correct, yes, it's kind of blending into that contour color. Mm -hmm. Great, y'all are masters. Great, great job. Yeah, and we have not blended yet, so no worries here. Okay, we're gonna actually come back to shade number one in just a second, and we're, I like to go to eyeliner next. So we're gonna take your eyeliner pencil, I think everybody should have one. If you don't, and by the way, at your parties, if you don't have an eyeliner pencil, have them take the, the tip of the sponge tip, and they're gonna get in the accent color with the tip of the sponge tip, and they can do their eyeliner like that. If you do have an eyeliner pencil, go ahead and grab that. We're gonna start in the inside or the outside? Outside, outside. outside. I know, <laughs> outside, that's right. We're gonna start in the outside. You are gonna line the top and the bottom of your eye. Um, and what I, what I also teach that I forgot to mention is that wherever you apply your brush, or your product first is where the most product is gonna be placed. That's why another reason we start in the outside. So with your eyeliner, the heavier your hand is in the outside and the lighter it is on the inside is better. Now you don't have to draw one long perfect line. You can draw short little tiny strokes. It's a nice creamy formula. You wanna keep it as close to the lash line as possible. On the top it's gonna to make your lashes look thicker and fuller. Who wants thicker and fuller lashes? 
That's what the top's gonna do. On the bottom, it's gonna help to define your eye. So you can start at the bottom, or the, at the top, short little tiny strokes from the outside all the way in, keeping it right along the lash line. And on the bottom, start here, and you can go all the way across if you want to, or you can go about three quarters of the way. We'll blend the rest in a minute. So you can take your eyeliner and go for it. <coughs> And in just a second, I'm going to show everyone my favorite tip of all when it comes to eyes. I hear a beep here. Does everybody hear a beep? Oh, okay. Like, am I just hearing things? Consultants, what I do at my glamour appointments is I go ahead and I take um, a tray with all the colors. I also have one of these for my personal use at home. So one for my demo. And, oh, it's so fun. It's like a kid in a candy store every morning. Hmm. But I have a demo tray here that I use at my color appointments. Um, and as you get more advanced and you want to pull away from sometimes using those cards, then you can really get creative by having this. We also have great tools online. We have virtual makeovers, too, that you can go in and plug in someone's hair color and eye color, and it will spit out a great customized look for them. So you can start to play and experiment. My 16-year-old niece loves to do that. I was staying with her this weekend, and uh, she was sitting on her laptop. We were watching TV for a minute, and I looked over, what are you doing? And she had the virtual makeover up there, and she was just putting in different hairstyles and red lipstick and uh, smoky eyes. It was so fun. Okay, how's everyone doing on their liner? You'll love our liner. It's so creamy, isn't it? So it just glides right on, but it's also water resistant, so it's not going to go anywhere, which is awesome. But we're going to ensure that it doesn't. And this is my next tip that I love. If you ran out of accent color, that's okay. I have my tray here. But if you have a little bit of shade number three, which is your accent color left, you're gonna use this tool. This is my favorite tool in your toolkit, the double-ended eye brush. If you don't, just use the tip of the sponge tip applicator. You're gonna dip it and load it um, in your shade three accent color, and you're gonna blend it on top of the liner. That's why we're doing it right now. It's going to do a couple of things. It's going to smudge it a little bit. So the more you blend it, the more you smudge it and it start, start to get that smoky eye look, which many, many women love. It's also going to smooth it out and even it. So if anybody feels like my line is jagged, it is not good, this is going to smooth it out. It's also going to set it so that it's a creamy liner and a powder on top. So you are set for the day. It's not going anywhere. And it's also lastly going to soften it too. So you don't have that harsh eyeliner look. So you're going to take this brush, hold it like a pencil, and get some of the accent color on there. And again, if you ran out, you can use my tray. Get some of the accent, hold it like a pencil, start in the outside, and you're going to smudge on top of your liner. Okay, I took yours. There you go. Okay, so your shade number three accent color with that double-ended eye brush. This is my favorite brush. Anybody else crazy about this brush? We also use it for brows. I don't know that we'll have time tonight to do that. I usually like to pull somebody up. We'll see. Um, and do brows. Because that really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Good. The other ends of the brushes, by the way, there's a brush and a comb. And the brush is for your eyebrows. And you can do that if you want to. First, you're going to brush them towards your nose the wrong way. Then you're going to brush them up then you're gonna brush them back into place. So that's what that brush is for. And then the comb is for if you use a non-Mary Kay mascara and it clumps, then you wait till your lashes dry. Very important, wait till they dry. Then you can comb through them. But you really never ever use that. If you use a Mary Kay mascara, you have no need. But that's what that brush is for. And then the um, angled tip, the hard part of that, you can use for your brows. That's what I do too. You can use a brow liner, pencil, or you can use shadow and fill in the brows, and it's perfect. So you're going to get a lot of mileage after this out of this brush. They're doing great. I get to see such a fun transformation here. Don't you love that trick? And if you are not an eyeliner person at all, you can just use some shadow with that brush, and it'll still define your eye, or you can line the top and just shadow the bottom, and it'll give you a little bit softer look. Okay, I have not forgotten about shade number one. Y'all are thinking, am I going to do this one? This is your highlighter color. And remember, light colors bring things out, dark colors recede. So when you were in class studying in a textbook, if you wanted something to pop out at you, you used a highlighter. 
and that's what this color is for. <laughs> it's light. Most oftentimes it has a shimmer, which is fine. For any age, a shimmer is fine. You just don't want a frost for every age. It just depends on the crystals that are in it. If you're going to use a brush set, you're going to use the flatter, smaller brush like this for your highlighter color. And I'm going to show you three places to put it. Um, you're going to use the highlighter color underneath the brow. Okay, it's going to lift the eye, a little mini face you'll lift, you'll love it. You're also going to use it a little bit on the inner third of the eyelid. Right here, we haven't put anything there. You're going to put a little bit on the inner third of the eyelid. Right there, it's going to help your eyes sparkle a little bit. And then if you're feeling kind of sassy, you can put a little bit right under here. And that really just kind of makes the whole thing fun. So right in here. So it's going to go underneath the brow, a little bit onto the lid, and then a little bit right under here. Almost in the tear duct area, like around it. That's going to make it really kind of fun. That's where your highlighter color goes. Consultants, how are you doing? Anybody have any questions so far? Okay. Now remember, again, there's a million and one ways to do your eye makeup, but this is a really great basic eye look that's going to look good no matter what. Yes? Right, exactly. Yeah, they're just going to use it once. That's why loading the brush is so cool. Yeah, so they're going to get the product in there, load the brush, and they're good to go. Um, now, if you're using sponge tip applicators, which a lot will at the beginning, <coughs> they just get a fresh sponge tip applicator, no problem. But loading the brush is plenty of color. Um, and also, to start with, a lot of you will be using these color cards. So they're just getting the shadow from the card on that brush and then you're washing them in between. You can use brush cleaner if you want to um, to sanitize it. You can also use cleanser um, to clean them out. That's a great question. Yeah? Good. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to make sure what I'm doing. Okay, good. Alright, so that's the highlighter color. Everybody got where that goes? Under the brow, a little bit on the inner corner of the lid, a little bit right under here. Now, it's very important that we blend, right? Because we know you have three beautiful eye colors on, but we don't want everybody to be able to count them. So you're going to take the same brush or applicator that you've been using. If you want to, you can kind of brush off the excess highlighter color on your hand or um, on a cotton ball if you want. And now it's important to blend. Now, I was always taught to blend from the outside in and to just kind of do this, keep blending. Well, at the makeup artist where I learned to load the brush, he said, you know, that can really muddy your colors. Um, so instead of this really pretty rainbow of colors, it just kind of is one fading color. So he taught a very interesting idea, and that's to blend up and down. That way the colors stay in the same place, but you're basically been blending the boundaries between the colors. So you can just take your clean brush, just kind of blend up and down in between the shades so that they just kind of have a fuzzy meeting between, between each other. Isn't that a cool? Way to blend. I thought that was so neat. So I used to just always go, mm, 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 blend, 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 blend. And then pretty soon the dark color was over here. And then the, yeah. So we just kind of blend up and down to sort of shade those boundaries right there. And that should give you a perfect little look here. Awesome. Good job. Um, while we're finishing that, I may have a couple directors come help me get mascara um, for these gals on their wands. And I'm going to tell you, we have lots of versions of mascara. We have a great lash lug mascara that's really good at giving you like go-go gadget lashes. I mean, they just keep going and going and going and going long. Then we have a great ultimate mascara that's really incredible for giving you nice, thick, full lashes. We also have a waterproof mascara that's been triathlon tested. Do we have any triathletes in here? We have a triathlete right here. Now, she was not in Mary Kay when she did her first triathlete, triathlon, but she will be wearing the waterproof mascara at her next triathlon to make sure that that's true. It's not going anywhere. Um, and then we have a lash lengthening mascara that um, has vitamin B in it. It's good for um, sensitive eyes. But we're going to give everyone um, what looks like the ultimate mascara tonight. And just to give you a little tip while they're getting it for you, it doesn't really matter what mascara you're using, but you're gonna, you don't want to pump the mascara wand because that gets air and bacteria in it. So you're going to put it in the, uh, in the tube and just twist it around. 
get enough on there, then pull it out. Um, does anyone know how long you're supposed to keep your mascara for? Two to three months two to three months. So you, every time you get it, either ask your consultant or do it yourself and put an expiration date on the bottom or better yet, join her mascara club and every two months she'll just send you a new one. And so you get your last one for free, okay? With your mascara, here's a couple tips for you. If you want your lashes thicker and fuller, you're gonna hold your wand horizontally, you're gonna wiggle it at the base and draw it up. That's if you want them thicker and fuller. If you want your lashes longer, you're gonna hold your wand vertically and draw it up like that. If you want them both, then you do thicker and then longer and then thicker and then longer. My favorite thing to do is to thicken your lashes a lot and then on the outer ones, lengthen those out. It gives you a really pretty kind of little butterfly look. On the bottom, you can do it however you want. This way or that way, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> and if you always do, you can go, go ahead and go for it. If you always get mascara on your lid of your eye, like, I just messed it up. Do your bottom lashes first then do your top. Because usually what's happening is you're doing your top lashes, then you're looking down, and your lashes are hitting the lid. Or you can do it before you put on, if you're really, really, really bad at it, put it on before you put any eyeshadow on. Then you can clean it off, and then do your eye makeup. The eyes are looking good. Another tip for the consultants in here too, I never, if I'm going from a daytime to a nighttime look, I never take my eye makeup off and start over. Never, 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 never. I just add to what I have going on. And usually, I'll add one of the darkest shades, <laughs> even coal, just a little bit of the darkest color, and I'll just add that and smudge that to the outer, maybe take a little bit and line around the eye and you're ready to go for night. So um, you never want to start all over again. You just want to add to what you already have and you'll be ready to go from daytime to nighttime, just with one or two of those darker shades. Um, <clears throat> the Sweet Plum is a great shade if you want to do that. Uh, any of those colors are great. They're looking good, Myra, huh? Yeah. And once we get your cheek and lip color on in a second, we'll let you hold your mirror out at arm's length and see if you need to add anything. But remember, more is more. <laughs> and it always wipes off. It is not a big deal. It's not permanent. I know some friends that love to do um, play with eye makeup right before they go to bed every night. That way they can see and, you know, have, be crazy and have fun with it and... Um, the only problem is if it looks really good, then you're bummed because you got to go to bed and take it off. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you about cheeks and lips real quick so that you know what to do if you're still doing eyes, no problem. With your cheek color, you're going to peel off the plastic, and there's two ways of putting it on. If you're using a cotton ball, you're going to get some on the cotton ball, and instead of doing this, you're going to have a really bad racing stripe if you do. You're just going to dot about three dots down the cheekbone, flip it over and blend it circularly. That's what you'll do if you do a cotton ball. If you're doing an angled cheek color brush, then you can just get some on. Remember where you place it first is where the most color goes. And it looks more natural if more colors here and not plop right there in the middle of the cheek. So you're gonna start down here and swoop it down. Now I will give you a trick so you know exactly where your blush goes. Um, everybody give me a thumbs up, because I'm doing awesome. Okay. No, give me your thumb and put your thumb where your ear meets your head, right here. It was cute. I did a group of like little girls, like 10 year olds, and I was like, no, there's your, there's your ear. No, there's your thumb. No, there's your, <laughs> y'all are perfect. Okay, so you put it right here. Look in your mirror and smile because you look great. Put your pointy finger in the middle of the puffy part of your cheek like a bullseye, right here. Okay, now pat your head and rub your tummy. No, <laughs> just season. <laughs> oh, this is where your blush goes. It goes from where your thumb is to your finger. Your th and if you lay it flat, you're like, oh, it's my cheekbone. Um, but you don't want to go any lower than that. It draws your face down. And you don't want to go any closer than that or it draws attention to your nose. So you're going to start here, swoop down, come back. So you can take your blush and go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Consultants, if you're using a cream blush, that is different. And I love a cream blush. I love it. Powder blush, that's how you put it on. Cream blush, what I love to do is do the clown cheek right there in the middle because you want to give that little kind of flush glow type thing with the cream blush, it's different. And then I usually just kind of have them whisk it back along the cheekbone. So cream blush is different. Powder blush like that, cream blush just right here. And then just kind of whisk it back. Gives them a little flush. Mm -hmm. 
Next time you're in the mirror, I promise some of y'all are going to be going like this. <laughs> you don't forget, do you? That's right. Good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what you're going to do next, because y'all are doing great at this. What you're going to do next is lips after you're done. No rush, though. You're going to peel the lip card off. It comes apart in two pieces. And actually, I'm going to leave that one nice. And I'm going to peel your lips off here. <laughs> OK. Love that blush. So pretty. It peels apart in two pieces like this. And I love when our company listens to the sales force. Because this used to be one piece. There was not a perforation right there. And we were always folding it. Yeah. And um, so what we, what we, they finally just listened to us and went ahead and made it perforated. You're going to fold your lip like this. If you do have a lip liner, you can go ahead and do that. Just be like kindergarten, color in the lines. Um, so you're going to just draw the V first and then bring it down. And same thing on the bottom. If you want to use a lip liner. If you don't, then you're just going to go straight to lipstick and you just kiss it. Just like that. Or you can put your lips here and pull it out and you're good to go. However you feel. Um, so you can use your lip liner if you want to. Draw the V, then draw it down. Same thing on the bottom. If you want to fill in your lips with your lip liner, you can. It'll make the color a little bit more bold. It will make your lipstick stay on longer. We have a brand new clear lip liner, which is awesome for girls that want their lip gloss to stay on but stay the same shade. It is amazing, the clear lip liner. And so once you're done with that, you're going to take, you can fill in if you want, you're going to take your lipstick and kiss it. And then I'll give you one last tip with gloss. And we'll be done with glamour. Do we have a question? on top. Do a lip liner. Do a lip stock. You know, just kind of add it all up. Layer it if that is something that you're noticing. Also, here's just a fun little extra free tip, too. Um, if you're taking, you know, you have your lipstick looks great and you take a drink. I know there's a couple guys in here. This looks weird, but it's not. Um, but if you're taking your drink like Myra is, if you will very subtly just lick the cup real fast and then take a drink, you will never get lipstick or lip gloss on your cup, so it'll stay on through your whole meal. I know. You, ha it, you have to perfect that art so you don't look odd at the restaurant. But you do just very solid. You bring it up to your, to your, um, to your face and you just lick it and drink. And it's, it works every time. Now, those of you going out to dinner tonight are going to be watching me. Let's come. And you don't want to use a straw because um, the more you use, remember things don't go back after a long time. And the more you suck out of a straw, eventually you're going to have fine lines all around your mouth. Okay, the last tip I'm going to give you is how to make your lips look thicker and fuller and kissable and pouty. Anybody like that? You remember at the very beginning when we talked about eyes that light colors bring things out and dark colors recede, right? What is the fullest part of the lip? Is it the little puny outside? Nope. Is it the nice pretty inside? Yes. So what we're going to do is put the light on the inside of the lip, right where it's fullest, and that's going to make your lips, lips look pouty and kissable and full. So you're going to take your gloss if you want to and you're just going to put it in the center of the lip. Okay? Just in the center of the lip. And then if you feel funny, you can put it all over. But that's my last tip for you, um, is that if you put it right there, and just kind of blend it a little bit, the eye will be drawn to that part of the lip. And you'll, especially if you walk around like this the rest of the night, because you can't help it. Kind of when you put it in the middle, you just sort of have to walk like this. No. But you can put it right there in the center if you want to see the difference, and then you can blend it all over if you feel like it. Got lots of choices. <clears throat> Once you have your whole look on and you are complete, I'm going to have you take, I love those lips, girl. I'm going to have you take your mirror out, gorgeous, and hold it arm's length in front of you, because that's how everyone's going to see you. And now you'll start to see you don't have too much on, or you might need to add more, right? And when everybody has their look, you can keep looking at yourself and admiring yourself. On the count of three, we're going to do compliment time for yourself. We don't have time to go around the whole group. Although, in a minute, I'm going to have everyone turn so everyone can see you. I know, they've been looking at the back of your head this whole time. 
But for right now, I'm going to have you do compliment time. And I love your cheeks. They just are so pretty. And it looks great. It looks good. You're going to take your mirror out, hold it arm's length, and on the count of three, I'm going to have you say what you like the most, what feature. Okay, you're going to say your cheeks or your eyes, or I love my lips, or I love my skin. Maybe you love the way your skin feels. That's good, too. So hold the mirror out, and everybody has to participate, or one lonely person is going to be embarrassed. So on the count of three, you're going to say, I love my, and then you'll fill it in, okay? So everybody ready? Okay, here we go. I love my... Oh, okay. We got it. Okay. Remember, everybody has to participate. Okay, here we go. You can say it with me. Ready? I love my lips. There we go. Okay, stand up, everyone, if you don't mind, and just do a little turn, because all of our consultants in the room want to see you. And it's okay if these are different colors and you've tried. Isn't it fun that you didn't try the same old things that you always do? So stand on up. Just turn around so they can see you. This is training for them, so don't be shy. And consultants, you make sure you ooh and ah. And the cool thing is they did it all themselves. And tomorrow morning they can wake up and do it all again, right? All they need is an accent color, a contour color, a highlighter. They need their liner and then they can smudge it, a little bit of cheek and lip, and they are out the door looking glam. Don't they look good? Yes. All right, yeah, give them a round of applause. Um, I bring pictures along with me, and I just am going to take just one or two minutes to tell you my personal Mary Kay story. Earlier, you may have heard me say that I used to work for NBC News, and I worked in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, worked for Channel 5, if anyone uh, has ever been up there, and produced the 5 o'clock news. So I bring pictures to show, and it does date me. Um, this has been a few years ago. <laughs> but one of the other reasons I like to show it at a glamour appointment is that um, I don't have any makeup on in that picture on the left. I just have red lipstick because I thought you were supposed to match. So I had a red shirt, so red lipstick. And that's it. Like nothing else. Why didn't, any, why didn't you tell me? That's my mom back there. Why didn't you tell me? I looked a crazy mess. Nobody stopped me and said, please wear something besides just red lipstick. Okay, but that's where I was when I started Mary Kay. And frankly, um, I started my Mary Kay business because I needed a change. Um, I was working 50 to 70 hours a week, slept with a pager by my bed, um, worked holidays, overnights, and this fairy tale, fabulous sounding job really was not what it was all cracked up to be. So I don't know if anybody has ever felt that way. And you wake up one morning and you think, what happened to me? <laughs> what happened to my life? And you work for the weekend and all those things that all of you I'm sure have heard. And one morning I was washing my face with my Mary Kay cleanser and it all changed and um, I decided that I was gonna give Mary Kay a try for two reasons, well three. One is I like the idea of the discount on the product. I am a bargain shopper and I love the idea instead of full price, half price. That made sense to me, plus it helped me overcome my fear to do it. Because I was very scared to do Mary Kay, so I said, well really I'm just doing it for the discount. That way if I wasn't good at all, I would say, well I just did it for the discount. And then if I was good, it was, you know, a happy surprise. So I did it for that reason. The second reason I did it is even the men I worked with wore makeup. So I figured I had 100% of the target market. Right? <laughs> I mean, they had to wear concealer and foundation, you know, so I'm like, cool. Even if the women won't buy, I know I could sweet talk some of the guys into buying something. So I figured that's why I'd start. And the third reason that I started um, Mary Kay was that I figured if I could produce the news, I could surely learn how to do this business. It can't be that hard. So I started Mary Kay, and the long story short is six months later, I quit my job with NBC and went full-time with Mary Kay. February 1st was my 12-year anniversary. I call it my Independence Day. So I left Channel 5, NBC News, 12 years ago. Well, a lot has happened since then. I have this picture right here. This is my great husband. We'll be uh, married eight years this May. And I put this picture because it's in Italy. And um, growing up, the only vacations I ever went on were camping and to visit family. And I knew that there had to be much more out there in the world. My husband, as I mentioned, is an artist. So I saved up my Mary Kay money and um, took him to Italy for our honeymoon. So that was really cool. So I put that in there because you can start to travel the world if you have a dream of what your Mary Kay money could be used for. I also put this picture in here. Anybody recognize this hot mama chick right here? This hot grandma? Our national sales director, Kate DeVlander. And I put that in there because she's my mom. And I'm really proud of her, and we have so much fun working together. But I also put it in there to show what someone using Mary Kay for 20 years will look like. So all you young girls, start now, right? Um, the next picture is this one's in Spain, and this one is in um, 
uh, Salzburg, Austria. Now these two trips I didn't pay for. We can earn trips around the world in Mary Kay. And so these were all expense paid trips that Mary Kay um, sent my husband and I on. And I love Spain, it was wonderful, but this is one of my favorites because as a little girl, um, with only taking vacations, camping and to visit family, I loved an escape and Sound of Music was one of my favorite movies in the entire world. I watched it a million times. And Salzburg, Austria is where the movie really, for real, took place. And got to go into the church where the captain and Maria were really married. Um, it was a drizzly gray day, the day when we were there, and we walked through the cemetery where the Von Traps were saved by the nuns as the Nazis were attacking them. And I, I still get chills, and I did that day, walking through there and saying, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that I said yes to Mary Kay, um, because getting to be here and experiencing that um, is just a trip of a lifetime, truly. Um, okay, this is the real reason that I love my Mary Kay business now. These are the two miracle babies in our lives. These are Kate's granddaughter, granddaughter and grandson, Brayden, who turned three, and Maddie, who's 15 months. And it was a long, hard journey for these babies. We went through a lot of infertility. And um, I love my Mary Kay business because it taught me to set a goal and not give up on it. So here's these two babies. <laughs> But I also love it because they both came home from the hospital in pink Cadillacs. My husband works from home as well. And we're able to both parent these children 24 hours a day. And I think that's so neat, considering how hard we had to work for them, that once they came home, we got to be the ones and get to be the ones to raise these precious babies. Uh, this is my most recent pink Cadillac. Uh, eight of them have earned eight free cars, five of them Cadillacs, and have to keep getting bigger and bigger because they need more car seats in the back. But they do have cute CTSs for the young girls here. And you can earn other cars too along the way, black Mustangs and lots of fun things. And then I put my family in here. We don't have territories in Mary Kay. And two years ago, we left Tennessee to come down here to Florida, to Pensacola Beach, um, to be a half mile down the road for my mom because she cooks a lot for us. So, and babysits for free. So, and my dad too. Um, so that's a little bit about my Mary Kay story. And consultants, I just share that at my appointments. Um, it's fun, it keeps me on track. And um, just shows someone a little bit about um, the Mary Kay business. Well, okay, for the last couple minutes, I said I was going to share something different. And I learned um, recently that there are five needs that people have. So just for fun, we're going to find out in this room what everyone's need is. There are five core needs that God created you with. And um, let's see, I'm going to find it in here. And we're going to find out which one you are. And when your need is met, you're in your sweet spot. And you're happy and life is good. And when your need is not met, you're stressed. So anybody stressed in here? Maybe it's because your need's not getting met. We all have one major need, and you maybe have a secondary need. So instead of giving you the names of the needs, I'm going to tell you uh, letters, A, B, C, D, and E, because sometimes we have a tendency to pick the one that sounds good or the one that we want to be, and it'll make sense in a minute. So I'm going to read um, need A, and you'll know it if this is you. These are your, might be your characteristics. You're empowered by an open agenda. You don't like rigid rules and conformity. You like to create your own way. You easily stray from plans. You like to make your own decisions and schedules. You express yourself through your actions, and you're energized by options. Anybody know right away that they are an A? It's okay if you want to listen to them all, but Angela, we have an A back there. Okay. Kate, did her event start on time? Oh, no. Okay, we have an A back there. <laughs> Okay, how about my Bs? Here are my Bs. They're empowered by a stable environment. They're not impulsive. They value trust in relationships. They seek and embrace peace. They like to control and create their future. They like to save and not spend. And they're energized by a savings account. We have some Bs in here. Okay, yeah. That's my secondary one. I understand. Some Bs already. We know. Yeah. Okay. They're empowered by the party. Party. Motivated by fun. They love to laugh. They don't like serious and dull conversations. Drawn to music. They love new venues and atmospheres, vacations, and destinations. Do I have any C party people in the house? I have lots of C. That must be why you love Monday nights. Okay. Ds. They're empowered by moving other people's hearts. They have a dedicated interest in others. They love heartfelt conversations. They love to influence others to shift their thinking. They're physically affectionate. 
They value relationships that stimulate the heart and the soul, and they make friends easily. Do I have any Ds in the room? I know some of you are changing. That's okay. Remember, you'll have a primary one that's very strong that you could not live or breathe without. And then you may have a secondary. Okay, lastly, E, empowered by an ambitious heart, highly competitive, love to break records, be in the spotlight, have others' admiration and respect. They have clarity in their process. They're not weighed down by incidentals, and they're energized by the win. Do I have any E's in the room? Any sister E's from, okay, I'm an E too. All right, well here is the interesting thing. Let's go back. Now that you've heard them all, who feels like they're an A, which is called freedom and choice? Do I have any freedom and choice A's? Okay, if you're a freedom and choice A, you love Mary Kay because we don't have quotas, we don't have territories, you don't have a boss, you have flexibility, you can set your own schedule, and your business is customized to you. That's why my freedom and choice girls love their Mary Kay business. And if you are a freedom and choice guest, why you might love having a Mary Kay business. All the flexibility, you call all the shots. All right, how about my Bs? My safety and security. Who's a B? Safety and security. Any consultants out there, Bs too? Okay. One of the reasons a B would love Mary Kay is, first of all, you're in the cosmetic industry. What you may not know is there's only three industries that do not decrease in sales in the Depression. Alcohol, tobacco, and cosmetics. Men smoke and drink, and women buy lipstick. <laughs> so you are in the right business at the right time. Because you don't have to worry that the economy is going to have anybody affected by the economy in their job or their husband's job or anything. You don't have to worry about that in Mary Kay. Also, we've been around for 50 years. We are not going anywhere. Our 50th anniversary. The other thing about security, too, is we have 80% customer loyalty. Which means once they buy one time, guess what? They're going to buy again and again and again, and again. So you don't have to find new customers if you don't want to. Treat your customers great, and you'll have them for life. That's another great thing, too. And of course, you get to set your own paycheck. And a safety and security, that's my second. I love taking my, that's why I took my husband on honeymoon, because I saved it. I saved it, I saved it, every time. I didn't go home and spend it, I saved it. And it felt so good to be able to do something quality like that. Um, with that money. Okay, how about my C's that like a party? This one's not hard. Where are the C's? This is fun and pleasure. Let me see all the C's in here. Why would they love Mary Kay? I don't know. Because <laughs> they get to come here and DJ. They get to have fun. They get to party on purpose, though. They get to travel the world with Mary Kay. Um, they get to be in the people business, but in the fun part of the people business and not the paper business, right? So that's why a C person, fun and pleasure. Many times, women that have another job that our C people love it because it's their pink bubble. It's their escape. It's their way to get out of the humdrum rat race and they get to have fun in their life with their business. Be with their girlfriends. Travel if they want to. Isn't that a fun <laughs> thing for all my C's in the room? How about D's? D's. Now I'm finding as I've been doing this, there are a lot of love and connecting people. And I think as women, that many of us are just natural nurturers and care and take a deep interest in other people. Where are the D's again? Okay, lots of love and connecting people. And isn't it great that we're in the business where we get to sit across the table from somebody and help them feel special? And I have found that Mary Kay starts with the external, makes them feel good on the outside, but it often leads to the internal. Any consultants ever have a facial where the girl says, I can't believe I'm telling you all this? Right? They get to open up their heart and be safe to do that. And then I also find that because of our priorities in Mary Kay of God first, family second, and career third, it often leads to the eternal too. And I'm so grateful that we have a company that we can be bold about our priorities and what's important to us. Did y'all hear that? Faith in God first. Faith in God first. Family second. Relationships, close relationships. And then your career comes last. You don't have to compromise on your way and on your journey. You're able to do that. Okay, and last, the ease, power and achievement. Do I have any ease? Okay, isn't it great you get to run your own race in Mary Kay and the sky is the limit. You can earn a free car. Um, I have a girlfriend that earned her first free car six weeks 
after she started Mary Kay. You can go fast if you want to. There are no limits, there are no caps. Um, you can move quickly up into management if you want to too, and there's always a next step and a next goal that keeps you going and can keep you moving. You also don't have to wait, we're not a pyramid company. So you can pass up people. You can go as fast as you want on the career path. Slow is hard, fast is easy. So my power and achievement people, you can make a six-figure income your first year in Mary Kay if you want to. You can break records. Mary Kay said the greatest consultant is not even in Mary Kay yet, and that could be you, or maybe you just started. And records are made to be broken, and why couldn't you do that? So there's so many awards and recognition and prizes and things that we give out that the power and achievement will just love and flourish with. So, you see, ladies, it really doesn't matter what need you have. Mary Kay can fill it. And if you do feel stressed and you feel like there's a need that's not being met, isn't it neat to know, if you're already in Mary Kay or considering doing it, that that would be a wonderful way to flourish in your need and then help others with theirs too. So you've already heard what we make and the last thing I'll share and then I'll let Kate close us out tonight is that you do, um, you can start your Mary Kay business for just 100 plus tax and shipping. That's how all of us did it. That's how I did it 12 years ago. That's how Kate did it 20 years ago. And you order a Mary Kay starter kit. And who knows what's gonna come in that. I know that $500 worth of stuff comes mirrors and trays and samples and all of that, but who knows what else might come out of that, right? Freedom and choice people, flexibility. Safety and security people, a great big bank account, right? Uh, fun and pleasure people, so much fun that you just don't even know what to do with yourself. Trips around the world. Uh, my love and connecting people, lifelong friendships and relationships and the ability to enrich others' lives. And power and achievement, gosh, the sky is just the limit for you too. So a $100 kit, and we'd love for you to consider doing that with us tonight. So I'm going to have Kate come and close this up. And um, thank you all for listening to me for a long time. That tonight's going to be a good night. That tonight's going to be